Media News Live. So excited that you guys are here. This is going to be a fun one. I've got I've got to get out of the way. Holy guacamole! It's Lauren Gaggioli. She is here, <laughs> uh, and we've got the unsinkable Connor Brown here um, as well. So this is going to be a fun show. These are all my friends. Uh, I like these kind of shows that we we've hung out together. Uh, offline we need to do another escape room so um, that's the thing we need to do because that was a ton of fun last time we got our friends already showing up we got gary stockton uh saying good morning you friendly faces oh from uh costa Costa mesa Mesa. that's your that's not where you're usually from is it gary the woods gary's usually from uh huntington beach yeah he must be uh you know, stretching his legs a little bit and going around. So we were talking about a little bit about like we got to do at the beginning of PodFest. We got there early. I got to go through with Lou and Lauren and a bunch of other people uh, an escape room. And I'd never done one before. And it was one of the funnest things we've ever done. So let us know in the comments if you would like to be trapped in an escape room with Connor Brown. Uh, <laughs> let me know if that's something <laughs> that you would like to do. Because I think we got to do it's got to be a tradition now that we go back to like oh, Momentum yeah. and PodFest in Florida and go to some of those um escape rooms well gary says he is in the office so sorry gary well maybe it's a good thing but uh thank you for for tuning in we've got uh chris stone here good morning you beautiful robots of planet earth yes we're going to be talking about robots today a little bit so this is going to be a fun show connor brown how are you doing today my friend i'm doing great and uh happy taylor swift new album day to all who celebrate tortured poets department my god the woman can well so she surprised everyone i mean we knew this this was coming a regular album but she surprised everyone said no you know what it's actually a double album so there's like wow. 36 songs so i don't know i'll let you know next week when i did get you stay up too all. late did you let, stay up too late and listen to them all <laughs> no i i am not that diehard of a swifty okay. i uh, did wake up though and first thing i i press play on oh very Aww. cool so uh before we get started a little house cleaning stuff i want to tell you guys i have just uh, launched a new free resource. Um, you can find it at jeffc.com forward slash pin AI. It's about mm. using, because, you know, guys, I touch, I cut my teeth on Pinterest. Well, this is a free course where it, I show you how to use AI to create images for Pinterest. Now, you could use the techniques for any kind of social network or creating images for anything, but I kind of focused on Pinterest for this one. So if you'd like to get access to that free tool, jeffc.com forward slash pin AI and Lauren Gaggiola. Get, kind of get a rumbly in your tummy and towards the end and you're wanting like some lunch. Uh, I want to make sure you guys get this. Uh, she has a free audit. So you can find it at jeffc.com forward slash DIY audit. Lauren, tell them what it is uh, when they sign up for this. Yeah, it's a free three-part mini course. It is a website audit. So we're going to be talking about SEO. And if we're talking about SEO and organic marketing and you're like, what? Or I haven't looked at my stats lately. You know, SEO is the kind of thing you don't want to be too granular on. You don't want to watch it every day, but you want to look at those trends over time. So if it's been a minute since you checked in and took the temperature of your website, this is a great way to do it. Totally free resource. Hop on in and I can help you out. Awesome. And last but not least, of course, the unsinkable Connor Brown. Uh, he, you, he is amazing at travel planning. He does awesome. He's got all the inside knowledge. If you need help with any of your vacation, cause it's getting to be vacation time. Listen, we all would rather be on vacation right now, but you could find him at www.opinion.com. Connor, you got anything to say that's cool about your, uh, your services and offering what's coming up in the vacation travel world. <laughs> So much. I mean, think about it. You know, you're planning summer or you're planning your holiday uh, getaways. Come on over. I do Disney World, uh, Disneyland, Universal cruises of all sorts. Um, definitely stop on by, shoot me a message. We can get you planned on on all sorts of stuff. And I'm excited for both of those resources you guys shared as well. Jeff, I'll be honest, when you first put up yours, I thought it said jeffc.com slash panini. And I got very excited. Very hungry. That yeah. was, that's, that's the marketer in me. Yeah, see, I do it on purpose. <laughs> Um, I'm equally excited for the Pinterest AI. I think that's really, really cool. So look at this. Uh, Lindsay says, and I, Lindsay, I hope you're doing better. I know yeah. you had, oh my gosh, it was, it was, uh, I'm hoping you're feeling a lot better, but she goes, Lauren's three-part mini course is awesome. I agree. Thank Lauren you. is super smart. I put it in my email that like, she's a glutton for punishment because she likes this SEO stuff, which I, I do not it's like <laughs> going to the dentist for me, but she loves it and super smart. She does a great job with it. So once again, make sure you go and check that out at the jeffc.com forward slash DIY audit. All right. So is we got all safe? that. What, Sorry, what is it safe to assume that Connor is having a good hair day from Facebook user? Are we assuming that's Lou? 
I was going to tell that that was my mother. But <laughs> no yeah. Lou? Well, I mean, Lou. Why does he never show up as himself? I, I know. Either. I Probably it's it's something Cloaked. internet-wide. He's done something to upset <laughs> Facebook. So I'm going to hit go on the... the oh, Amy. We, okay, it's Amy. Okay. we Thank you, Amy, for stopping in. By the way, Amy's got a great podcast, too. You need to check it out. Uh, Amy, make sure you drop your link into your museum podcast, because I think it's fascinating. So make sure you do that. So I'm going to hit go on the podcast machine, and we will get started. Hello, folks. Welcome to Social Media News Live. I'm Jeff C., and you're not. And I'm Connor Brown, and this is the show that keeps you up to date on what's happening in the world of social media and more. Have you ever wondered how to navigate the complexities of SEO without feeling overwhelmed? Maybe you're interested in discovering practical strategies that can boost your online visibility, or maybe you're eager to transform your understanding of SEO into a tool that really benefits your business. If you've struggled to make sense of SEO or even where to start, then today's show is just for you. We're excited to welcome a guest who has harnessed the power of organic SEO to elevate businesses. Lauren Gaggioli is going to be sharing her experiences, her, uh, her expertise, and her top tips for mastering SEO in the ever-evolving online environment. So sit back, clear your schedule, clear your mind, and get ready for this week's episode of Social Media News Live. Lauren, how are you doing today? I am great. Thank you so much for having me, Jeff. It's always fun to spend time with you and Connor. Uh, yes, I just wish we had tacos. I know, exactly. No <laughs> this Connor, is you a close, this yeah. is a close second behind tacos, but you know what? It's not even a close second, but we are so excited to have you here, <laughs> as always, Lauren. And if you don't know who Lauren is, you should because Lauren Gaggioli is a digital entrepreneur who loves building online businesses and supporting her fellow solopreneurs as they share their gifts with the world. She's a big believer in intentional living, and Lauren created her online course about purpose, the big why life, to help folks from all walks of life create their personal mission statement and support healthy habits to support living a life of purpose. Lauren is an organic content marketing expert, having leveraged SEO and organic marketing to grow and sell her first business, higher scores, test prep, and online ACT and SAT prep company. Wish I had that when I was going through it. She now, <laughs> I hear that a lot. <laughs> she now supports her fellow online entrepreneurs with organic strategy consulting services, the organic marketing ecosystem course and through her virtual mastermind for online entrepreneurs. When Lauren's not working, you can find her running uh, her next run Disney half marathon. I'm signed up for the half marathon uh, in January as well, Lauren. Really? So, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll uh. be walking most of it. Uh, or channeling <laughs> her serious Molly Weasley vibes, knitting up a new sweater, puttering in her garden, home brewing beer with her husband, which we love, or making a delicious mess of the kitchen with her kids outside their home, uh, uh, just outside of Seattle. Lauren, so much awesome stuff going on. <laughs> We're so happy to have you. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Thank you very much. So when you, so I've got to do a shout out because of our friends that sponsored the show, uh, Ecamm. You can find out more about them at ecamm.com forward slash Jeff for 15 off your first purchase. But one of the things when Connor was talking about knitting, that you love to do knitting, uh, my friend Katie Fox, who is the marketing manager over there, she's big time into it. I need to get to you guys together and see what kind of yeah. craziness you guys knit up. Um, maybe, I don't know. I think something. she's a crocheter. I, they are okay. There are. So we'll see. That's yeah. how much I know about the the sport of knitting. Um, uh, but I do both. And I'm okay. sure she would. Yeah. She's, sure she she's awesome. Some of the stuff she's posted. So, yeah. uh, but ecam but ecam.com forward slash Jeff. Make sure you guys check them out. They sponsor the show and make this all possible. But we're going to jump right into taking the oh no out of SEO because um, it's not my favorite thing to do, but it is super important. And one of the things that we want to talk about, and I want you guys to ask your questions because I want to make the show all about you. If you struggle with SEO or have questions or you see these changes coming, drop them in wherever you're watching from. We'll try to bring those into the show today. So we're going to just start right off of, um, you know, all these changes to SEO, Lauren. It's often seen like as this move it, moving target. So how do you recommend small business keep up with all these changes and practices that, are, that I've even seen already in two, 2024? I'm going to go real counterculture here and say, uh -oh. don't, don't keep your finger on the pulse of every little iterative change. The general arc of the Google algorithm updates is that it is bending towards elevating quality content. So 
if you can deliver quality content over time in a consistent fashion that speaks to humans first and bots second, then you're able to sort of weave those threads together and elevate your presence in the search results. So this is one of those things, you know, with social algorithm changes, I think we often think social and SEO are similar, but slightly different. And that's actually not the case, right? The the social algorithms, you know, thinking about like when TikTok or Instagram went to reels and like it was because they were looking at TikTok taking market mm -hmm. share, yeah. right? That is something that you fundamentally have to shift how you create your content. However, the tweaks that happen for SEO are much more minute for the small players in the space. And the truth is we don't want a deluge of traffic, most of us, right? Especially if we're, do, we're service providers. We just need the right traffic at the right time to start facilitating a conversation. So I wanna step back from this sense of like, we have to keep our finger on the pulse because we're gonna drop out the bottom of the algorithm and instead say, let's focus on creating quality content, period. Mm -hmm. And there are some parameters and guidelines that can help us, but overall, that is what we should be focused on. I gotcha. love that. I'm sorry if you can hear my little guy like no, you're fine. Backing That's up fine. along in the, like, the hallway. I don't know where my husband is, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm in here with you guys, so not my job. <laughs> but I love that. I love that. It's kind of that's a great like phrase to I guess you could say live by in the SEO world, creating. for humans first and for the bots second. Um, yeah. Human first content, bot second. Don't little worry about the little minute things that are always changing. But you know, Lauren, I think we do still have to kind of take into consideration AI and, and how it is changing SEO, whether we can use it for good or bad or just what it's going to do. So with AI evolving rapidly, especially within the SEO space, you know, what are some specific strategies you think businesses can adopt just to ensure that their SEO efforts, you know, you put so much time and effort into it actually are effective? Yeah, so I, you know, everything I've read about Geo is still kind of leaning us towards quality mm -hmm. content. Yeah. The primary difference is kind of focusing on what Google already wants, which is that EEAT. It's your expertise, your experience, your authoritativeness and trustworthiness. I always mess up the, the acronym. <laughs> so it's those four things. The one thing that I am seeing really being called out, and of course, you know, I have a friend who wrote this once. He said, the internet's kind of like layers of paint on layers of paint on layers of paint, and they're all kind of the same. Right. Uh, when you read about geo right now, we don't know much. It's all predictive. But what a lot of people are saying, and who knows if they're just copying each other, is that citations are going to be really important. Well, if you're following SEO best practices, even for geo, like SEO best practices say you should have outbound links on your website. And the reason you should have outbound links is because it actually contributes to your authoritativeness because Google's already benchmarking you for that. So this is about really taking that long view, right? And focusing on how you contribute to the conversation. You know, I think we have to zoom back even further and zoom out and go, why am I creating content? what's the point? Well, it's to share what you think. And so if you're just chucking, you know, a prompt into chat GPT, copying, pasting onto your site, that's not very helpful. Now, if you have, let's say, processing problems or learning difficulties, and that makes it easier for you to structure your argument, and then off of the scaffolding that AI provides, you then custom tailor it to what it is you wish to say, great, right? Use AI in those ways that it can be your assistant. But if you make it your content creator, you will sound like everybody else on the internet and you will have no credibility or authoritativeness. So when you when we say geo, you're talking about yes. uh, generated, generative optimization, right? 
Yes. Is that one? Okay. Just so yeah. people maybe who don't know what that is, like me. Yeah. Um, Sorry. So, and then, but, but I also, because we had Ramba Diamond on a couple weeks ago, and she mentioned GEO, which is that, you know, I think it's generated, generative engine optimization. I'm assuming that's the same thing. I think so. Yeah. Okay. I think I- that, yeah, basically and, the, the future of SEO search. as alley-ooped by AI. Right. So, and then there's the Google search generative experience that I've heard as well. So all these things, my question is, you mentioned doing great content and I know a lot of people are worried like, okay, if I put all this great content out there um, and the search engine, I mean the, the, like the chat GPTs or whatever, use that. And all they do is they put a little citation at the end of it that links back to my site. Am I l- losing traffic? Wasn't this the same kind of thing that when they would do those little snippets at, when they would search results yeah. where people would just find the answer and they didn't really have to go to your site? So right. is there anything people who want to get content can do? I mean, other than just create great content? Yeah, and this is this is going to be the tricky bit, right? Um, because what it's kind of like if you go to the deli and like – get the full like piece of prosciutto like the the full like oh, so, yeah. hand, leg of I, I know i have to bring it back to food sorry Stop. Um, <laughs> like if that's that's kind of what seo is right now right seo is like saying do you want prosciutto do you want a you know turkey breast do you want this that and the other what geo is going to do is kind of give you a sampler right they're going to mm-hmm. like do the do the char- charcuterie Right. board and you can have a little bit of each and they're going to put it all into this like context um for you i personally don't love that like right. i like to have control and so i kind and i think we also have to know that like this is a long way down the line because yeah. 8.5 billion searches per day on google and to generate um the results so mm. just from like sheer like rack space for servers like you kind of go oh crud like that's right. that this is going to be this is going to be a long tail process like this is going to take a long time for us to to sort of ramp up into this um when it comes to what we're creating i think humans always want to hear from humans and this is where i think a lot of seos get it wrong that when they're doing keyword research, they're looking at volumes and traffic and they want to like drive these like massive swaths of people to your website. I think what's going to happen is that if you are putting interesting information out into the world, unique takes on generally asked questions, right? You still need to make sure that you are answering questions that people are asking and that's where the keyword research comes into play. But that connective point of like, I have something counter to say, I have something slightly different to say. If it's intriguing enough, Mm -hmm. I think people will click through. And I'm not saying to be intriguing for intriguing sake. I'm saying use your beautiful brain that is such a gift and your creativity. Like that's why most of us want to create content. Yes, we want to be found, but we want to be found for what we're saying and that aspect is is how you convey it, what you say. Yes, it needs to connect to the whole ecosystem of the internet in a way that helps you get elevated where you are quoting other resources right. and that sort of thing. But can you provide something new and different such that you intrigue people so much that they click through? And so, I think that's always the name of the game. So I have a follow-up. First of all, I have some great comments like, uh, Chris Stone says, yes, it's sandwich <laughs> instant engine optimization. So that I would sign up for that, uh, AI. And then Dustin, who is the AI master with Magi says, that's true. Think about the compute power needed to generate AI search summaries for every query. It kind of makes your mind uh, explode there. Uh, one of the things, cause you mentioned, okay, there, there's some hacks and you want to, I know that like recipe bloggers did this, like instead of putting the recipe, especially like for on Pinterest, they would write like a story like in your, and it's even a meme now. Like people are like, okay, just get me the sneaking recipe. Yeah. Click that jump to recipe right. button quicker yeah. when I get on that page. But a lot of yeah. places don't have that now. I mean, they, they've they taken out because they want people to stay on the site for a little bit. Um, and so do you think it's going to be more and more of people trying to find hacks around like, because they did that because they didn't want, you know, Google just taking all their stuff and they want you to stay on the site and go to the bottom and at least see some of their ads that they're getting paid to put on there. Um, yeah. Are we going to have to come up with like hacks and workarounds for generative AI kind of in that kind of vein? Um, so I'm seeing what Dustin's putting down here. I think uh, 
<laughs> recipe bloggers ruined the internet for recipes. Yes, true. <laughs> um, but yeah, emphasis on rich content. So images, video, he's saying audio too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that idea of like when people come to connect with you, how can they connect with you deeper? Like it, it's important to have words on the page. You know, recipe bloggers, they're, they're not just doing it for getting found or for keeping people on the page. They're doing it for getting found. Like Google reads really well mm -hmm. yeah. and it takes fewer resources for him to read really well. Um, which is why, you know, putting in closed captions and things like that is really important for video and transcripts for audio, like all these things that we know, like it actually is feeding Google uh, really well. And so we want to make sure that our our content is structured in a way that is helpful and useful to the end user. Um, I had this thought around the helpful content update in uh, October of last year that um, – a friend of ours, Paul Gowder, he was mm -hmm. like, a lot of these kinds of sites are seeing that they're getting dinged. And I think it was like movie reviews and it was it was food blogs that he saw a trend just in a small population. It wasn't like massive. And I think that there is a quick hack that a lot of people who are in our space can leverage, which is if you want a recipe, like I know the recipes that I use. Right. I search the same gingerbread recipe every day and year at Christmas. <laughs> I know who I'm looking for. Have I signed up for her email list? No, I don't yeah. want her emails. I just want the dang recipe. And right. this year I got smart and I wrote it down. So now I don't even have to go there, which, right. you know, sorry, but like that's, that's what it is to put free information out on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, th but for me, whenever somebody comes to my website, I always provide them with the next right step. And the next right step is to get a free resource like the DIY audit. And that pushes people to a thank you page. So a single user who comes through organic search conceivably could hit two pages in a very short amount of time on my website. Then with the email that delivers it, they come back to my website to get the free resource in a gated page, a hidden page. So I get three visits from a new user in a matter of minutes. And by creating this cycle, I'm pulling people back into my own personal ecosystem. Google's watching the behavior and going, oh, what I sent this person to this website for, that person delivered such that the, the stranger I connected is now engaging with three different pieces of content on her site. And so I think we have to be thinking more like this because that helpful content update, it was people who like go to your website, get the information and leave. Yeah. Those people, the, when that was the entire exchange, especially on an ad-based monetization platform, right. they were getting dinged and they saw their income going down. But I think for a lot of creators, it's a completely different play. We want to create community. We want to stay connected and we have valuable things to offer. And so being aware of that and being aware of what Google's paying attention to and then how we can position ourselves to create that, you know, circle of life, if you will, <laughs> Disney right. voice, right. Um, that is what is going to keep us in the search engine results page, keep us relevant. And I think that will hold true all the way through any sort of iteration that AI can throw at us. Because at the end of the day, it's human to human, right. even if we're leveraging data to make that connection. Gotcha. And Des yeah, Dustin puts it perfectly, I think, in, in this comment. He says, so in other words, the foundational elements of great content haven't changed. They've just become more important. <laughs> Absolutely, right? Creating great content for people to consume. And I guess, you know, Lauren, all this stuff is kind of like, well, maybe it's going to change, right? Maybe it's going to be this, maybe it's going to be that. Our consistent foundational strategies still seem to be the most important sort of thing. Get the data from the keyword research, research, create great content and put them into your own organic marketing ecosystem in a way, That's right? right. right. Yeah. There are some prevailing myths out there, whether it's of what's coming down the the, uh, the pike or what is here right now. So are there any myths uh, that you think are just need to be debunked for, for business owners, for entrepreneurs right now in 2024 as they think through their SEO strategy? So I would love to see if anybody who is watching has yeah. – any myths that they're like, is this true? Like, if you have questions like that, please drop them in the comments. I think the number one thing 
that we have to remember is that the quality, I can say it again and again, but quality content leads. And also there will be changes down the line. That's just, that's the nature of literally everything, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so if change is coming, it's easier to pivot if you're already in motion. So don't wait because it's, it's like the laundry, unfortunately. It's never done. Like it's never going to be done. And so is it better to do a single load right now, knowing that there's 10 behind it possibly there's, there's a pile over there <laughs> we right. can't tell that's i'm pulling this from life um so it's it's one of those things that you you really have to be aware of where you're getting your messaging from and if it's people saying that this this isn't the thing like ai is here and and therefore seo's out like that just doesn't even compute yeah. so I think that's that's really important to remember. So um, I see Alexis saying, how can yeah. I find to write content yeah. rich, uh, con- consistent rich content on my site? So here's the thing. A LinkedIn post has a life cycle of what? 36 hours, something like that, like maybe. Um, so what I would say is, and I will I will preface this by saying this is how I built my first company, which I sold for six figures in 2021. I had 16,000 new users coming to my website each and every month for two years running. And those two years where it was at its peak were years where I worked a four-hour work week. I had a baby and I was not working, but I was still churning new users and making money off of my passive income offerings. So Alexis, can you carve out three hours in the next month to write a single piece of really amazing content and publish it. Because if you can publish one keyword research post on your website that is going to help people for years to come and you can start to churn this cycle and turn the wheel and integrate it with other content on your site, can you do that? Because the truth is it can feed you for years if you position it correctly. Mm -hmm. And so, I'd say if you don't have time to update LinkedIn posts, whatever time you were going to allocate to LinkedIn, go ahead and just create a great blog post yeah. and post it on your site. Um, go do a guest interview, get a backlink from somebody to elevate your site's domain authority. I just did a guest post for a friend who has a ridiculous domain authority of like 70 something because she is a website designer and every site she's designed has backlinks. Mm-hmm. Um, she I, let me do a guest post on her site about which website builder is best. My domain authority jumped nine points. I went from or eight. I went from a 10 to an 18 on a fairly new site, one that I haven't been developing and, and creating backlinks to for very long. A single post. Is that worth it? Yeah. It's going to help grow my authority, which even in the AI age is going to matter. Like, Right. All of the old ways of doing things, everything old is new again. Like it's all this, it's all still relevant Mm -hmm. and you don't have to do everything. I'm very much a Pareto principle SEO gal. Do the 20% that you feel is manageable so that you can reap 80% of the rewards, but it takes some education so you can discern which of those paths is right for you as a content creator. So one of the things when you were talking about the, the LinkedIn thing, I think a lot of times we get the cart before the horse. We think about we got to put all this social content out there and, and that kind of bogs us down in the brain when really, like for this, I make one piece of content and then I use social to put it out there, not the other way around is mm-hmm. I think what yes. you know, you're all saying. All roads is, lead to your website, even right. if it messes with the social algorithms. Like there's creative ways you can do it. Yeah, I don't do anything without a link. I don't care if it it busts my algorithm on Facebook or whatever. Yeah. I want people back or to my sponsors or to whatever, you know, and I'll, and I'll just yeah. create uh, great content. So we've got some um, great comments. So Jim uh, says, do you think uh, web society has an appetite for long form written content anymore? So I think that's interesting. I like the way, Jim, I, I like the way you position this web society. Yeah. Um, have you been on book talk? Yeah. Like, I think I, in, in whatever the Instagram one is, what like bookstagram, that's what it is. You know, like I think people are still reading. And I think if you are a writer, then your community is readers. 
if you are a video creator, then your, your community are people who are consuming on YouTube. I don't think the, I, I think there's no way that we can be everywhere all at once. Like right. we have to pick. And I think that's the hardest part because we feel like we should be able to do it all. And it's like, no, pick what resonates with you. I love the written word. I also love video. Like, so I am careful about how I create that. And I am actually doing a wider kind of path of, of content creation where if I create a video, I have someone write my SEO copywriter, write the words off of the video I created. And then sometimes, particularly in the purpose vertical, I'm kind of like Joan Didion. I don't know what I think until I write it. <laughs> so I have to explore it in that particular way. So I have, you look at my website and you're like, she does, she has long form written content. Actually, I create it differently based on the domain because how I communicate in different domains is different. Right. And Jeff and I may be working on a podcast as well. Okay. So I think it's one of those things where you have to be aware of how you prefer to communicate and then find the community that resonates with that. And Abby, yeah. book talks and promise. I love big, it. She's a big book we have, talk. Uh, fan. We have an Akatar conversation coming, Abby. I yeah. feel it. Yeah, she's already told me she's getting those books. So, um, love it. <laughs> she went on the she went on the uh, um, the um, how, the escape room with us as well. So that was a lot yes. of fun. So, okay, Connor, you had a question. Book talk, Bookstagram, Facebook. You know, we're all <laughs> That's books, right. all it's across. All, all about paper. reading. Right. Chris has a great myth that he wants busted or maybe not busted. I don't know. Mythbusters, uh, social media marketing uh, edition. How <laughs> important is it for podcasters to have full transcripts available on their sites and the best place for them to be available uh, for those who want slash need them? So there's always kind of this question of, do you post the entire transcript, right? Is anyone actually gonna read the entire transcript on your site? Are you just doing it for SEO purposes? Are you hiding it under kind of an accordion sort of thing? Lauren, any any ideas or, or thoughts around that? So I, I think if you're doing videos, you should have closed captions. And I think for accessibility, and especially, again, the ease of doing this now with Rev and mm -hmm. AI tools, like I, there's no reason to not have them, but I actually don't think it's as helpful for SEO. For po podcasts, oh, I love them. I love them so much but they're not great SEO tools, I don't think. Um, now with video and embedding video and that sort of thing, if you're being really careful about how you're naming them, I think the best play for podcasters to get found in SEO is to have the guest name in the URL mm -hmm. and reflected mm -hmm. throughout. And also you can be a, a real, uh, mensch to your guests mm -hmm. by giving them really quality backlinks using anchor text and pointing to deeper pages on their website as opposed to find lauren at laurengaggioli.com you say lauren has an online mastermind you go to my online mastermind page you say online mastermind for entrepreneurs you highlight that and link it straight to that page. And this is great when you have affiliate relationships, you can do that to courses where you use that mm -hmm. anchor text to point to those deeper pages. There's more meaningful pages on that person's website. So I would say for podcasters, that is probably the better play from an SEO perspective rather than the transcript. But I do think the transcript is important for accessibility. So Abby, take note of that, by the way, because she helps me with my uh, stuff. So what we do for this show, so when we're done, we take the video, embed it on the page, and then we also have the link to the podcast where they can have the, play, the podcast player. But then we write an article that is based on the episode. But below that, we have the full transcript. So it's a, yeah. it's a bunch of text. But I, So should I not have that text on there because it doesn't make a difference? No, or? I like it. Okay, okay. I like it because I think then – you are, yeah, Google, Google, he don't hear so good. So <laughs> okay, <got it. laughs> written, written word is, is very helpful right now. You know, like you yeah. got to think about the, the actual like physical resources required to crawl each page, right? you know, and, and that sort of thing. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, we got a lot of questions that we, that we, I'm so glad you guys are putting comments in here, but I want to give a shout out really quick to our sponsors. You can find out them at ecam.com forward slash Jeff. Use code Jeff15 to save 15% on your first 
uh, purchase. And also, they have an amazing thing coming out. Yes, it is Leap is coming. I'm going to be speaking there next week. It's totally free. I'm going to be talking about uh, Beyond the Stream, talking about how uh, we can use AI for creative showmanship and strategic repurposing. Not doing it for you, but there's some really cool tools that'll help you do it a little bit better. I'm gonna be talking about that. So make sure you guys go to leap.ecam.com, sign up for that. Uh, our friend Paul Gowder is also gonna be speaking as well. A lot of great speakers, leap.ecam.com. All right, so let's jump into this second section, uh, but let's let's get some of these questions because uh, I wanna talk about intent because I think a lot of this has to do, I mean, that's kind of Lauren's sauce, secret sauce about um, SEO, but we've got some great questions. Um, the first one is Kira says, have you noticed that Spotify now offers the transcript on podcasts as well? The same way they have for lyrics. I think it's a great idea for access accessibility. I know that Apple podcasts Apple. have just started doing this yeah. as well. So once again, you want to make check, check and make sure they're accurate because they never get my name right. Uh, and I bet Lauren has the same problem. <laughs> so, no, yeah, yeah. no, it's fine. So, it's fine. <laughs> and then Gary says, YouTube tells me that the video is not the primary content of the page. I include transcript and a lot of text. Is that harming my video SEO? Any recommendations on how to best embed video for SEO? I think I'm a little confused by this because YouTube telling you on your website. Yeah. I, I, I'm a little confused by I the question. There is video schema markup in uh, keyword uh, or in SEO plugins, like on a WordPress site where you can designate a page as like video being the primary, but YouTube, I don't think would tell you that. So, um, you know, YouTube SEO is like a totally different game. Like that's, mm -hmm. I leverage YouTube as a video hosting service, not as a social media platform. And that's like mm. a, a keen distinction for me that like, I'm not trying to like publish the same thing all the time and then like have my shorts feed right, in. Right. Like that's a whole different strategy. And I don't, I yeah. don't play that game. Gary says it's I, the Google search console that's telling him that. Mm, yeah. Google search console. Okay. So mm. that probably has to do with your schema markup on that page, um, which is like a whole different thing. So okay. I'm probably too technical. Yeah. Ping Lauren. <laughs> but, she's, she, yeah, it, uh, yeah, that, that's. Send uh, me a message, Gary. Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll talk. Uh, and then Jim has this question and a reverse of Krista's question. How important it is to have a narrated version of a written article available for listening instead of reading? Maybe an option at the end of the written article? Um, I think you, I've seen it done. I remember, uh, I think it was Kate, Kate's take mm -hmm. on John Lee Dumas's uh right website she used to do this where she would like read the article that she had written um which makes sense because john's audience is very audio driven and they could just like chuck it into the feed right. if they wanted to um I, i'm not sure it's necessary um and i think that it uh it depends on your audience like is it an accessibility issue um are there ways to make it so that for folks who have accessibility issues that they can have their reader read it to them just make sure you're you know formatted correctly for mm -hmm. that um and i think it comes down to how much capacity do you have yeah. um i would say for repurposing i mean you've already got it written why not if you can record it release it as a podcast point back to your website i don't know that might be something it, it's i know it's another thing to do jim but um I, I like to repurpose stuff. That's me. You know that. So anyway. <laughs> You're the repurpose king. <laughs> so, so yeah, I want, I want to talk about this user intent because I read a lot of your articles and you have some great ones on your website about this. And this ties into creating great content. But I want to ask the first question is like, why is it so crucial for businesses to understand the intent of their website visitors in this, you know, in 2024? So... Keyword, when you're doing keyword research, the there is the search intent behind why the human typed that query into Google. So um, there's four of them, but the two that I primarily focus on are informational, right? So somebody's asking a question like, what is search intent? <laughs> and they type that into Google and I can meet that and be like, hey, let me tell you a little bit about search intent. And I can lay it all out if at the end of that you try to sell somebody something 
you <laughs> they're gonna slam the door in your face so fast like it is a first date don't show up on the doorstep naked right mm -hmm. like you need to say hey like you asked this question and i had an answer for you and i'm really glad that i was able to provide that information for you i kind of wonder if like you're interested in some more stuff do you do you maybe want to get my free website audit it's kind of like saying you know we just met can i buy you a cup of coffee it's a lot less creepy right, right so right. Yeah. can you stay engaged provide a pathway for that person to give an easy yes and make no mistake email addresses are a currency so you do want to get something for this exchange but when what you offer is high value instead of creating 53 different resources to direct people to you can have a single one that every single seo post that i write ends in the same place because i know that if you're curious about seo you also are curious about driving traffic to your website and you can't know where to point that kind of trajectory if you don't know where you're starting you have mm -hmm. to have that foundation to leap off from so it's a very easy pivot for me it's always the same pivot and if somebody's coming through google then they don't know that I offer it on every other page in on my website about SEO. And by the way, it's different for if you come in through a purpose channel. If you're curious yeah. about core values exercises, hey, guess what? That ends at a different place. So I'm like, have two disparate threads and I'm able to, to create that free, free engagement and get an email address for mm -hmm. my heavy lift of two free offerings on my website. Yeah. So um, that is if somebody's coming in for informational queries. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes people are coming in for transactional queries and nothing drives me more nuts than saying organic marketing course and or, you know, coaching, online business coaching and not seeing the price on the page. Like right. that is not showing up naked, right? Right. Transactional queries are the Tinder of online search intent, right. right? You have swiped right, like we know what's going down. So you want to be giving everything you can to smooth the path to yes, yeah, right? Yeah. So you need to dispel any myths on that transactional page because that person typed in that query with a credit card in hand. Don't make them go through all the, the hoops, just let them pay you. <laughs> and so that's the coolest part about understanding search intent is that suddenly you're like, oh, my sales pages can rank in search? Yeah, they can, but don't make your informational queries sales pages. Don't make your blog post a sales page. Your blog post is a completely different channel. The transactional queries need to go to a different, a, a curate or connect in a different right. way. And gotcha. so it's really important when you're doing keyword, this is, this all goes back to the humanization of this. Like when you're doing keyword research, yes, you're looking at numbers on a page, but they represent humans on the other side of the screen who are typing things in and want help. And so how do you help? And you on your end of managing your website can be really clear about how you're going to facilitate the next step. Gotcha. And Connor, did you pick up that part about not showing up on the front door naked? I, I know you can't come back to Texas anymore. I wanted to yeah. say thank you so much for putting the in dating metaphors because it explains a lot. Not only yeah, about, you learned a lot today, huh? Yeah, my <laughs> SEO past, but also maybe my my dating past. So thank yeah. you for that. Always learning something new. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't show up naked. That's the first day. Don't do that. Yeah. Hashtag growth mindset. Yeah. Growth mindset. So you have to, you know, <laughs> informational, transactional. You know, there is that transitional, which is kind of more awkward sometimes and it's not for everyone it doesn't fit the mold but the the offering something based on the traffic how do you go about just adjusting that right like how can you see the traffic coming in is is much more informational um is it more just around those those search queries that that people are are searching for and then how can you kind of create content or modify your current offerings even just based solely on on the intent of the traffic like i think of maybe you have a website about boats right and mm -hmm. if uh, the search query you're going for is what is a boat you're probably at the end not going to be <laughs> right. boats right but would you like to one, buy one <laughs> but <laughs> I have a boat. do you want it but with the long tail keyword is more how to buy a boat maybe that's kind of getting more towards that 
that kind of content. So, so modifying your, your current offerings based, based on the intent, how would you go about that? So your example around how to buy a boat, that's um, a commercial intent. Yeah. And so commercial sort of lies in between informational and transactional and how you leverage it as a website manager is entirely dependent on how you wish to, right? So you could treat that totally as, as an informational uh, query and just write a really helpful informational post. Mm -hmm. And at the end say, you know, we do free consults. If you are in the market for buying a boat, we would love to support you. And of course, this all depends on like what your business model is and that sort of thing. Now, if you actually sell boats, then maybe this is the kind of information that is more transactional for you. Right. Um, so maybe a free offer isn't the right offer. I think it really, it all comes down to what do you want to do with it? So like, again, I'll bring up Paul. Um, he is doing some interesting posts around uh, email marketing, mm -hmm. but we did some that are reviews for, for products he uses. So if somebody s types in convert kit review, right, they, they're in the market. They want to know if it's the right fit. So Paul, as a user, can write a very helpful informational content and say, this is what I use. This is how I use it. And by the way, here's my affiliate link. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And so he he is writing an informational post and actually potentially making money off of that. So it's the kind of thing that how you wield these things is really dependent on your business model and how you serve and how you choose to position your informational posts, your sales pages, but it all comes down to doing keyword research with the end user in mind. A great question to ask is if somebody typed this into Google, do they have a credit card in their hand? Then like, mm. yes, no. Okay. If yes, this is a sales page. If no, or, or something I like have an affiliate relationship off of. If no, then I am pure information. I am just helping them take the next right step. And in doing so, pivoting them to be oriented towards opting in for whatever my freebie is in mm. that domain. So what I like to think about what I teach in my course is you pick a vertical. So I've mentioned so thus far, I have two, right? I have purpose, live with purpose, organic marketing. I also have one about digital entrepreneurship. So I have three working on my website. Each of them leads to a paid offering, at least one single paid offering. Yeah. And so then I need to start developing content in those different verticals and relating that content to each other through internal linking. And to make this clear to Google what I'm doing, I don't cross the streams, make like Ghostbusters, mm -hmm. and I keep them very isolated. But I'm very clear as to whether I'm pointing to a free offering or a paid offering. And having this structure in your head, doing keyword research through this lens, gives you a sense of like, oh, I know how every, every time I sit down to write, I'm not reinventing the wheel. I know exactly what I'm driving to. So on that, I'm, you know, we talked about, look, okay, we, the intent for sales, right? Like you have your credit card ready. And then you have ones like, well, a lot of us do podcasters, content creators, um, YouTubers, whatever. And we're posting our episodes or whatever. And, so once a visitor lands on your website, what are the most effective strategies for converting them into leads or customers? Are pop-ups and tripwires, are they still effective? Do you have any other strategies that, you know, are there, are there new methods emerging for that? Like what's the best way other, is it to give them a freebie and, and get them on your list? Is that what you suggest? Is those still the same thing? If it's a podcast, then yes. Like on your podcast, in your show notes, you know, if you mention uh, something like, no doubt I will mention organic marketing ecosystem, my SEO course, like mm -hmm. that is going to come up just naturally. So you can like list that in your resources. So if people are curious about it, they can go there. But if somebody came for your podcast specifically, then what I like to do is I have a footer and an exit intent pop up and they go to the same place. Because I think the other thing that happens is we have too many calls to action. Right. We confuse the heck out of our listeners, our users. Sometimes 
And I think too, like we have to think about the fact that for a podcast, if you are optimizing for, say you're an interview-based podcast, you're optimizing for your guest, that person ended up on your website looking for somebody else. You have to be respectful of that person's journey. But also if somebody's a longtime listener and they wanted a resource, then that also has to live on that page. So I think there's a difference between including resources and making content very helpful and accessible to people so that if they go, oh, I heard that thing and I wanted to go back to that episode that that one gal said that she had this thing, I need to be able to click through, yes. But how do you welcome cold traffic to your website? Do not show up naked, which is where I don't like tripwires on something like that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so for example, I would say, you know, Tripwire, I have a, um, I offer uh, group coaching mastermind uh, sessions a couple of times a week. Um, I cap it at four people. It's like a drop-in situation. You can get your first session for just $25. And so I have a discount code that's very clearly labeled that probably would count as a tripwire on that page, but somebody is coming with a search intent. Everybody knows a mastermind is a paid offering unless you're doing peer to peer. So if somebody's searching online mastermind for entrepreneurs and they land on my page, then they know that that's a transactional query. Like I'm not just going to mm -hmm. be giving that away for free, but I can give them an easier way to say yes. And so like a one-time kind of gifted thing to be like, hey, are we like a good fit? Mm -hmm. um, 25 bucks for group coaching, like find that right. somewhere else. You probably right. won't. Right. Um, so it's a good deal, but it is only offered on that page. Like I wouldn't put that out there on an informational query page. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. What about that, that kind of balance of, you know, we want to show up in the SERPs and the search results. We, we want it to be. And, and optimized but you know if if we want to kind of bring this person into our community we have to make sure that they have a good experience on the page yeah. right and it's kind of this balance like perfect example i mean this is more from like an adsense perspective but i hate when i search something i land on a web page and it's like a video playing at the top an ad in the middle a pop-up <laughs> ad from below and i have like inch that i can scroll and i'm reading like yeah. one line at a time i'm like <laughs> I'm out of here. Yeah. Out of here. I'm never giving you my time of day ever again. When it comes to the SEO perspective of that, we want to hit all the check marks and, and check all the boxes for what Google wants. But Lauren, how do we balance that? How do we balance those SEO efforts with still creating a great user on page experience so they'll actually want to engage with our content going forward? So this is where I feel like not getting too zoomed in on this is what works for SEO and this is what's going to make me money. Like zooming back out and going on page SEO best practices are your best friend. So things like using headers, well, it breaks up wall of text for your user. And it also speaks to Google's bots if you're positioning it right with the keyword research you've done. So it can be your best friend and actually bringing this back to like gen ai stuff this is something that they're saying it has to be um scannable right we will, this is how how we read even if we're readers we're not sitting there reading every single word and so numbered lists and having you know rich rich content in their images and video that people opt to turn on uh <laughs> you know all of mm -hmm. those things like think about what annoys you and then don't include that. But yeah. also <laughs> look at what the SEO best practices are and go, oh, how can I leverage this in two ways? How can I hold both threads at the same time? Mm. And that human and bot inter intersection, you can do that easily. And it's not that hard. It actually makes your content a little bit better. I know Jim, who was on here earlier, was a bit resistant to this when we started working together. Um, I don't know if he's still here, but uh, you know, he was like, I, the on-page SEO feels like it's going to get in the way of my creative process. And so maybe you write creatively and open-endedly to begin with, and then you layer the framework over. Or if you have executive function issues, lay out the structure and then fill in the gaps or you you know use ai to help right. you create the structure and then put your own voice into it like you can you can 
your creative process can be whatever it needs to be. But if you're writing something that is solely for your soul and you have zero SEO, you know, juice going on Mm -hmm. and you're not bringing new people in, then why are you writing it? If it's just for yourself, then it's a journal. Yeah. Yeah. Jim says he's working on it. So yeah. Thanks, Jim. You're doing Um, so great. You're doing uh, so great. (laughs) This time has flown by, but I want to, I want to have one more uh, question kind of in in enhancing connections because you talked about this and and once again, go to Lauren's blog. She's got some great stuff on there. But one of the things that you said is that you mentioned traffic does not equate to connection. So can you share some strategies in turning those casual visitor visitors who are just coming maybe for that informational content to engage community members? Because I know that's your intent and a lot of people just think traffic, 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 but, but I'm not making any sales or I'm not growing my list or so yeah. what do you say about that? This really goes back to that search intent. Like you are building out an ecosystem on your own little website, right? And 96.5% of websites are getting no traffic from organic search. So like, if that's you, don't feel bad. It's just a matter of time before you turn on the spigot. But you have to have that nice and shored up so that it's very clear to Google what you do, to a human user who lands on those deeper pages. This is the other thing you have to remember. If search is working for you, people are not coming through the front door. They're not coming to your homepage that was beautifully curated and designed and lovely. (laughs) They're coming to that blog post that you slammed up and forgot to put a call to action on. So they're coming in through the windows. (laughs) Right. You've got to be prepared for people to crawl in through the windows. And the way that you do that is by thinking about each individual piece as though that is someone's first introduction to you. Keeping in mind why they are there if they came through organic search. They had a question. They had a, a question about something you help with and they need your help. Give them transformation. Don't gate transformation. Give them little sips from the hose and then say, there's a lot more here. I would love to share it with you. Here's a freebie in exchange for your email address. Mm -hmm. And do it all above board. You know, don't be slimy, scammy. Like, don't send them one resource and then be like, I I taught you nothing. I gave you nothing. Now buy from me. Right? Like, you want to nurture and always make your offers with an open hand. You know, don't if, if they're ready to buy, they're ready to buy. And if they're not, they're not. And great. If they stay on your email list, it, the whole thing will come back around. So deliver a lot of great value. Um, help them answer the question that they are asking without making them work for it. Like really make it easy for them. People want, they want help pushing the easy button. Awesome. Well, I, once again, we're just out of time, but I wanted to, <laughs> so Amy says, ah, love that picture. That's a great help. I think she's thinking about the picture you just said about coming in the window, not Connor on the front porch. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'll, that was the one she I'll was mentioning. That picture, of, uh, that picture of people coming in through my window is terrifying <laughs> to me. Right. And then saying, what can I help you? How, yeah. What can I do to help you? Thank yeah. you for coming. You yeah. can have a shotgun in hand, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And so. It's very. Uh, so Abby liked, uh, she goes, uh, ooh, don't gate information. So yeah, a lot of great takeaways. Uh, once again, make sure you guys go look at Lauren's website and also her uh, DIY audit that you can find. I ha- This is a short link for me. It's jeffc.com forward slash DIY audit. If you click on that, it'll go right to her site and you can uh, sign up for that free thing. Uh, don't forget, I also have a free course um, that you can go check out at jeffc.com forward slash pin AI. Uh, it's all about creating uh, images with AI that you can use for all sorts of networks, but it's kind of focused on Pinterest for this one. Uh, go make sure you guys go check that out. And as always, we thank our sponsors, Ecamm, ecamm.com forward slash Jeff. Make sure you go check that out. And also Leap is coming up. So leap.ecamm.com, that is next a week. I think mine's on Friday. I think Paul's is on Friday too, but there's a bunch of great speakers. So go to leap.ecamp.com. Paul, uh, uh, Paul Gatter, uh, Connor Brown, I, that naked image is just burned in my brain and I can't, it's just, <laughs> what? Connor Brown, where can we find out more about you and where you live, where people can show up at your front door? Well, we'll talk offline about why that naked image makes you yeah. think of Paul, but um, <laughs> you, can go, <laughs> you can go to www.opinion.com dot com or follow me at wdw opinion across the social medias lauren what about you what you got going on tell us where everyone can find you and uh what's your favorite blog post that you've written uh, lately 
that UX and SEO one was really fun. Mm -hmm. I really liked that. Um, if you're interested in mindset growth, I also wrote one recently about the one thing most core values exercises are missing. Um, so if you're, if you're like a mindset junkie, then that one might be for you. Um, but yeah, laurengadgioli.com, everything lives there. Uh, and yeah, come say hi. Yeah. And if you're listening on the podcast, Gaggioli is spelled G-A-G-G-I-O-L-I. -G -G Make sure you go to laurengadgioli.com and check out all her stuff. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we had so much great comments. Jim, Gary, Amy, Abby, uh, all, all the folks who asked some questions. Dustin is always showing up. And thank you guys so much. We hope that we answered your questions. If you have some more, make sure to drop them in the comments. We'll try to get those uh, after the show and when people are watching the replay. But with that, thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.